Welcome back everyone and today we are diving into the critical first steps of setting up Fortinhack, the cornerstone of network access control. You know, after the installation on the VMware workstation, which I did the earlier on, I figured out that I need to do the initial setup so that you can be able to know how it works uh, properly. You know, a proper setup is essential to ensure enforcement portals work seamlessly and also the dynamic VLAN assignment also work and operate as expected. So whether you are a beginner or you're refreshing your knowledge, this guide will walk you through everything you need to configure on your router, on your switch, and also on Fortinac itself in order to set things up uh, correctly. Fortinac is designed to provide visibility, control, and automated responses across your network. Uh, however, if the initial setup isn't done correctly, uh, you could face issues like authentication uh -huh. failure, VLAN yeah. assignment or ineffective yeah. enforcement portals. So let's ensure that your Fortinac works the way it's intended, efficiently and securely. So let's get started. So here is the diagram we'll be working with. Uh, we have Fortinac, we have uh, L3 device or FortiGate. And we have uh, a switch, a server, and our PC connected to the switch as well. So with this simple diagram, we can be able to even scale in a larger environment that have multiple switches and all that. But the basics here is to get Fortinac integrated into the network, which we already have. So starting from the Fortinac, uh, port one of, of the Fortinac is connected to the switch, which is uh, on the management network, which is defined by, which is defined by the port two. So you see that the color code of the ink connection is the same. So they are both on the same network, port one and the port two of the FortiGate device and Fortinac are on the same network. And if you look at port two, uh, we see port two is 10.15.13.1 and it will be serving as a gateway for the port one of uh, our Fortinac uh, here. So you see port one here is 10.15.150 slash 24 and its gateway is this port two, which is 10.15.13.1. So the 10.15.13.1 is a management network. So we have our LDAP server on that network. We have a switch uh, IP address on that network as well. So Fortinac has visibility to integrate the switch and the FortiGate or L3 device we have and, and onboard them on its own on its own uh, dashboard. So if you look at the port 2 of the Fortinac, uh, on port 2 we connected port 2 of uh, Fortinac to port 21 of the switch. Then if you look at port 2 here, it's 172.16.16.100 slash 24. So on the fourth gate device, the port 6, you have 172, 172.16.16.1. So the port 6 on the fourth gate is serving as gateway to the port 2 of the fourth NAC. So that's as defined the network. Then we need to also define isolation network, enforcement portal network, and it's, it's meant to be defined uh, using VLANs. So if you look at the port 6 of the L3 uh, gateway or the, or the fourth gate, we have a sub interface that was also defined on port 6 and also connected to port 23. So looking at this, the VLANs that we have here is uh, VLAN 99, uh, which is on fourth gate as port 6.1 sub interface and we have it as 7 uh, 172.18.99.1/24 and we gave it a uh, VLAN uh, 99 then if you look at the sub interface of the port 3 we created a sub interface of the port 3 on port th on uh, on the fourth gate device and we gave it VLAN 10 and which is our production uh, VLAN, which is 192.168.11.1. So VLAN 10 is a production network for our staff, our users, or all of our corporate staff that we want them to have access to, you know, some of the corporate resources. Then on the switch, we define our VLANs. On port 3 of the switch, we uh, make port 3 of the switch a trunk port, and we allow VLAN, native VLAN and VLAN 10, which is a production VLAN. Then on port 23 of the switch, we also make it a trunk port. We allow 
Port 1. Uh, we allowed Villa 1 and Villa 99, which is the Etnac Isolation Enforcement Portal Network. Um, so we have trunk port on port 23 and trunk port on port, you know, port 3 serving different purposes and all connected to the fourth gate device so our uh, fortinac has been integrated uh, to the network uh, from on port one which is the management interface and port two which is the fnac port uh, interface and the l3 device is serving as their gateway and uh, we can now set it up from the gui so after you successfully installed fortinac on vmware like we did in the other video <coughs> The next thing you want to do is to set up the enforcement portal so that you can be able to control uh, how devices and hosts access your networks or the VLANs you set up. So port 2 is very important to set up and because Fortinac is now running on 40 OS so we can possibly use the uh, you know, 40 OS CLI commands like we used to use on FortiGate. So in setting up port 2, what you do is to do config system interface config system interface then edit a port to enter then uh, set your ip so remember the ip address we used um, we we explained um, during the diagram so we'll be able to put it here uh 172 dot 16.16.100 slash 24 enter then set allow access um dscp and uh, dns then ping so because this port 2 will also be uh be the interface we use as dsp server for the isolation network ip address that will be distributed to wherever we want to restrict to whether registration or authentication network so we need to enable and allow all these services on port 2 so enter then end then end using your hand command twice is very important so that Fortinet can register what you've configured then the next thing for us to do is to you know have access to the GUI of the Fortinet of, of the Fortinet and set up the isolation or enforcement portal so on the enforcement portal um coming to config wizard looking at this is the initial setup we 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 did when we first installed Fortinet on the VMware. So on the Fortinet portal, we need to enable the R3 network uh, for our, you know, isolation and all other enforcement portal. We need to, you know, ensure Fortinet has a, have a level of control. So we are using the R3 network mode, which is a routed network with multiple scopes for each isolation network. So once this is toggled on, um, you just click on next then this isolation layer is what we want to you know uh, bring up so you toggle this on and then the ip address is still the same ip address we gave it here in the cli uh, command so just put I, the ip address as 17 to 16 to 16 to 100 then uh, the gateway ip is the ip address on the fourth gate device then uh, the subnet max is 255 255 255.0 which is slash 24 then we need to also define our isolation scope in defining your isolation scope you would uh you need to add once you had you would you know pop up your uh another page like this so set up the label hq i set this up as hq hq network or isolation then your domain so don't forget in in in, in the last video where we talk about installing Fortinac on VMware. We need to ensure that uh, Fortinac IP address has been added and included in, in our DNS record so that we can be able to resolve Fortinac with an IP address or with his uh, FQDN. So by default, this will come by default once you've been able to set up the DNS for Fortinac. Then the gateway will be uh, 172.18.99.1. 
this <coughs> one seven to eighteen dot nine nine dot one is the isolation network that we defined, you know, as, as a sub interface of, of port six, which is the isolation network. Yeah. So we are defining the scope for one seven to eighteen. 99.2 to 178.99.1 and this is the ip address that will be given once you click on add you click on uh you define the scope from the, starting with the ip address of 172.18.99.2 to 172.18.99.240 so or any of the ip address or scope you want to give it then add it here so this scope itself the 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 interface 2 the port 2 that we are setting up will be the DSCP server. So to give out IP addresses to whoever connected uh, to our network and want to restrict access to. But we have the, you know, the gateway on the L3 device or the FortiGate device, and we have it as a sub interface here with uh, the VLAN of VLAN ID of 99. So once you set this up, you click apply and so because we can with with this kind of setup we can use the same vlan for you know every other functionalities we want them to to use so this same setup can function as registration uh, portal remediation portal dead end portal virtual private network portal authentication portal so i don't necessarily have to set all all this up again once this is set up can be able to use it for any of this functionality uh, when you need them so once this is set up the next thing is to go to the uh, additional route in the additional route this would have been you know configured by default once you once you include this once you set up this isolation interface port 2 and all that so when you come to additional route this would have been in place as well after this you click on next and you also confirm that every every other thing has been you know has been put in place so once you confirm this has been put in place you click on apply as soon as you click on apply it will ask you to reboot then you have to reboot so after the the fortinac is done uh, rebooting the next thing for us to do is to do uh, is to you know do a dscp uh, relay on the FortiGate device. Uh, why are we doing this P relay? Is so that when an host connected or when a device connected, Fortinet can get the information of the device um, when it's trying to request for maybe IP address through DSCP uh, fingerprints. So if you look at this place and you come to end, um, you come to is an host and you come to endpoint fingerprints. Why uh, the DSP relay? would give Fortinax a level of visibility do, through this endpoint fingerprint. So going to your L3 device, I uh, will need to create a relay on the sub interface of it. So if you look at this, we have the 172.18.99.1, which is the isolation uh, network. We need to do a relay to both, you know, both the Fortinac port 1 interface and Fortinac port 2 interface. So if you right click here and edit and you click on edit uh, in CLI, you can see that we have set DCP relay IP to 10.15.13.150 and 1600. So this helps us to give Fortinac some information about the network, most especially devices connecting and all that. Then you can also do it from the GUI. If you come to DSCP server, on, under the mode, you click on relay and you click on type as regular. Then you type in the IP address of the management interface of, 40, of Fortinac. Then the port to IPS address of Fortinac. Then you click on OK. Then we also want to also, also implement search on, uh, on the on on our production <clears throat> on our production um vlan so on the production vlan you need to just do the relay to only the uh fortinac management interface alone you don't need to do you don't need to do a relay to the you don't need to do a relay to the uh port two so on the production uh network and also if you have multiple vlans 
within this um, environment you can also ensure that is done so on the production vlan we would also do the village to just to just the fortinac management interface so if you come if you edit the interface and you come to dcp server we make it a relay regular and we uh, impute the ip address of the management interface of uh, fortinac so with that fortinac can get much information uh why the devices are connecting through and uh, through endpoint uh fingerprint then if you have another vlan that needs to also you know your users are connecting to you can also do that as well but majorly we are doing it on port on the production vlan and on the uh on the fortinac isolation vlan so after this is done uh the next thing we want to do is to create a uh, access list or you know ensure uh that fortinac ensure that the there is a form of interaction between those networks so when you go to your firewall policy or access list or whatever you call it we want to ensure that the management the management network which fortinac resides on most especially have an interaction with the production uh, network so when you're defining this firewall policy or your access list what we want to achieve is that fortinac interface your servers and all that can definitely interact with the production network which is vlan vlan 10 so we need to set up a file policy that allows that and also uh, vice versa so we have to have a reverse policy for that as well then we also need a firewall policy or access list between that allows interaction between the isolation network and uh port 6 of uh of the network interface which is between 172.18.99.1 and 172.16.16.1 so there should be both uh, a forward and reverse policy for this for that level of interaction most especially if you are being using if you're using access lists most especially for the fortinac interface has to have for the fortinac management interface have to have interaction with all those network then uh we need to also ensure that your management and if you want your management to have access to the internet fortinac should also have access to the internet internet if you want that then the, the production network also which is port 10 uh your there should be an access list of prior policies that allows access to the internet so once this are set up we are good to go we are good to go in order to you know ensure fortinac is set up properly for enforcement and administration so once all these are set up your firewall policies your network interfaces and your fortinac port 2 isolation interfaces are set up correctly then you're good to go you can see that once you integrate your switch <coughs> to the fortinac it will be able to read all the you know vlans on it and you can ensure that fortinac is able to recognize devices and when you come to your endpoint profiling uh endpoint fingerprint you will see that fortinac has a low lot of information within the network and you can use these endpoints fingerprints to you know create device profiling rules and all that so let me know if this actually help because without a proper setup for on fortinac uh, there'll be a level of frustration and you won't know what to do so thank you